Within every single lens, uh, whether it be a DSLR lens or a point and shoot lens, like the one on this camera, uh, there's something called an aperture. Now what the aperture is, is essentially a circle that controls how much light comes through the glass and passes through into the sensor behind. So I'm going to draw exactly what that aperture looks like, uh, just to give you a basic idea. So, yeah, this is the bottom portion of your lens, and generally they're made up of blades. It would look something like this. So. The light's going to come through, pass through this circular area here. So you can control that area to control your exposure, essentially. Maximum aperture is how open that space can get. Um, so lenses like this, higher end lenses, will have that space be able to open very, very wide, meaning more light's going to be able to come in. What exactly happens, though, when you open that up or close it down to a tiny little hole? Well, I'll show you. Let's just say, for argument's sake, this is about the equivalent of an aperture f2.8 which is fairly open. And this is the equivalent of an aperture that's f16. Keep in mind, this is that center hole that's letting light through into your sensor. At f2.8, you're gonna be able to get a much faster shutter speed than f16, just because you're, the amount of light coming in is much higher. However, what that affects is something called depth of field. And depth of field is a really simple concept. When your uh, aperture is very open, maxed out, letting the most light in, you're gonna have a very shallow depth of field. And what a shallow depth of field means is literally whatever you're focused on, whatever point in the frame you're focused on, everything beyond that point and in front of that point is going to fall out of focus and you're going to isolate that one subject. Now this works really well for some photos and it doesn't for others, so that's something to keep in mind. For example, if I'm taking a picture, say there's a guy standing here, there's a tree behind him, uh, maybe there's a fire hydrant right here. Um, you know, and a, and a bird flying right there. Now, if I'm shooting from right here with my camera uh, and I have it at f2.8, only this guy's going to be in focus. However, if I jack up, if I make my uh, f-stop, my aperture smaller, uh, I can get everything in the frame into focus within reason. So again, if you're shooting something, let's say, like a basketball game, you might want a somewhat shallow depth of field so that you can isolate the players in the frame and the crowd kind of falls out of focus. Now let's say you're shooting something like a landscape. Uh, you're going to want to have most things in the frame in focus. In fact, probably the world's most famous photographer, Ansel Adams, uh, was known to shoot at f64. He even had a crew of his homies, uh, who are all these photo buddies who shot these brilliant landscapes and they were called the F64 Club, meaning that they would only shoot with lenses at stopped all the way down to F64, which is a, basically a pin size opening in your lens. And the reason they did this was because all of their photographs, or most of them, were tripod mounted, uh, and they were these gigantic landscapes, and he and, and his cohorts wanted everything in that landscape to be perfectly sharp and in focus. The nice thing about lenses that open up really wide and have a really good maximum aperture, like f1.8, or f1.4, or f2, or f2.8, uh, is that you can do a lot better in low light. Obviously, you're going to sacrifice depth of field, and you're going to have a shallow depth of field in low light, but you'll be able to shoot much better. Now, if I was going to a concert and I was trying to shoot at f64 inside the venue, I would be totally out of luck. But with a lens like this, if I had it stopped down to f1.8, I'd have a much easier time. And the reason I'd have a much easier time is simply because there's more light being allowed into the lens. And because it's a low light environment, you want to maximize that amount of light to keep your shutter speed fast enough that your subject isn't blurry. So these are the basics uh, and some tips just to help you wrap your head around this whole idea of aperture.